hello. This is Diana Price. Welcome to Spicy Business Talk. And this is where you get all of the ingredients for business success. Where, you know, we always do high performance things. We learn to stretch. We learn to do things so we can really stand out, but don't show off. And this is a show where, as you know, we balance your business from inside your business to outside your business. And we also intersect that with your lifestyle, in and out from top to bottom. So today we're talking about a subject that's really near and dear to my heart as a woman. And of course, there's so many other women that I've talked to that also have the same issue. And I want to take you over to our blog. And the blog post is entitled Successful Women. Oh my God, are we distinct? Yes, we are. And sometimes we have masked identities. Do you get that? So we're gonna talk about our confidence. We're gonna talk about our distinction, our difference. And we're also gonna talk about why we have masked identities sometimes. Well, so let's get started. First, I want to, I just want to welcome you all to the show because it's really a pleasure to have you support me and to, to tune in every Tuesday. And we're here every Tuesday at 12 noon. That's Pacific time. And we're here until 1 p.m. If you want to call in the live phone number while I'm live, and I am live right now from 12 to 1, you can call in at 323-965-1600. Again, 323-965-1600. The website I'd like to call your attention to for the blog post is dpriceassociates.com. dpriceassociates.com. So head on over to dpriceassociates.com and we're going to go through a little bit of what we're going to go through. Actually, we're going to go through a lot of what we're going to go through today because a lot of times when I look at what I went through, It's probably nothing compared to what some other really powerful and successful women have gone through. And one of the things I have learned is that I really have to allow my confidence, my confidence to keep me going. Because when I allow my confidence to keep me going, it makes me keep my mindset in the right in the right place. And I was reading some things that I want to share with you why the confident people, and I'm not talking only about women, we're talking about men here, how we do things a little differently and what that confidence, how that really plays a big role in, in what we do. Because the mentality that you have, it's, it's really, the mentality is how you succeed. If your mindset is going in and out and it's talking all about all the negative things that have happened in your life, guess what? That's where it's going to sit. It's going to build a foundation there, and it probably won't leave unless you allow it to leave, unless you choose for it to move out and go somewhere else. So let me, let me tell you a few things first that we're, I, I want to just kind of set the stage. When I say distinct, when I say different, all of us as beings, we have our own definition of what success is. You probably have a definition of what success is, and I have my own definition of what success is. So when I think about the success and the failures that I had, the failures played a big role in my success, and I don't mind saying that sometimes everything doesn't work out the way you want it to. Why sugarcoat it? Why sweep it under the rug? It just doesn't work that way. And I want to, I, I want to share something from my soul because when I first started my entrepreneurial run here, um, six years, six seven years ago, and it, it was it was when I was straddling. I was straddling being in corporate America and straddling trying to be an entrepreneur. Loved the whole situation, but. There was a lot of times I had to really mask my identity. Do you know what I mean by mask my identity? In corporate America, I have two identities. Well, I'm black and I'm a female. So when you look at how you present yourself, the image, when you have to adapt to certain situations in life, in business, in social environments, professional environments, and in personal environments, you're not always wearing the same mask. (laughs) I hope you know what I mean by not always wearing the same mask. 
And that mask is not a negative, okay? It is not an insecurity. That mask is an identity. It's something that's a part of me. And maybe some women don't understand what that means to wear a mask. Um, but minority women, black women, I, I've, I've had other colleagues to, to share this with me that, oh my God, you know, how do you, how do you deal with that? So we've had conversations about that and I wanna, I wanna talk a little bit about that today. And before we get started, I wanna just share with you what, but before you even get to wearing the mask, you have to have that confidence about you to understand and promote yourself in a way that you're confident. Because if you're not confident about what you're doing, your abilities and what you're saying, you're going to exude that and people are really going to not not see the fact that you you know if you're not confident they're going to see that so the first thing I did I made some notes and I was share with them I got really comfortable with myself my happiness came and comes from within me I don't like anybody else to define my happiness if someone does something to me or if someone does something for me if I'm grateful about it I always will find more to be grateful about than I'm not so the first thing I always like to do the critical element of my being is to be happy about what I'm doing and really let it come from within that drives my confidence it drives it it drives it so in, in you you've heard me smile and talk about smiling on this show quite a lot so know that no one is going to ever say that I'm the best in the world or the worst in the world and no matter if they say oh you're so good or you're so bad you can never be as good as bad or as bad as someone tells you you have to define that for yourself and that's what I do this has been a hard lesson for me. Judging people is so easy to do. I have to catch myself sometimes. I don't know if you do, but I have to catch myself sometimes. It's easy for us all to do. We get in a conversation, we talk about this person, we talk about that person, and before you know it, we're passing judgment. All right already. So I don't like it. I don't like it being done to me, and I don't like other people doing it to other people in my presence. So when I do it, I have to like, <laughs> I have to slap myself and say, stop it already. That is not what you're supposed to do. When you're in an environment in corporate America, sometimes there's projects and jobs and things and activities that you may want, and you may not want to do, or you may not want to participate in. Do you get my drift? So, I found that in my in my business, it's easier for me to say, yes, I want to do this, or no, I don't want to do this. Now, in my corporate days, I had to say, oh, of course, or I'd have to raise my hand and say, I'd love to do that. But I gotta tell you, I've always gotten some really good things out of things that I either didn't wanna do because I forced myself to say, let me see the good in this and let me bring my entire being to making this project a success. So under I understand now that, and I say all the time, you know, no, I really don't wanna do that. I really don't wanna do that. And I'm really good with that and I feel good within myself. And when I'm confident, you know what I tend to do, especially if I'm in a situation where I'm learning or I'm looking to interact or to connect? I like to listen. I like to listen a lot more than I talk. I listen intently. And sometimes I listen by taking notes. And when I do take notes, I'll ask or say to the person, you know, I'm just gonna jot a few of these things down because I'm really, really intently listening on what you say and I don't wanna forget anything. So listening to me is a skill that competent people have and distinctly successful women have. And, and of course men too. I'm talking about women today, but all these things I'm talking about, guys, you're included in this too. I just want you to know that, absolutely. So. Another pet peeve of mine, <laughs> and it's always been something that I have focused on up-leveling. I like to speak clearly. I like people to understand my diction, my tone of voice. I don't like to speak garbly and, you know, blandly. And so when people go, what is she talking about? So speak clearly. That's, that's a real trait of competent people. 
when you have a victory, when you have something very small, and I didn't used to do this when I was in corporate America, I didn't stop and take the time to celebrate my small victories. I did not say, you just made that victory, you just, whatever it was. I did not stop to say, hey, look what you just did, congratulations. I wasn't all about, you know, doing that and patting myself on the back. I've learned through the years, though, it's really important to celebrate the small brickies, victories. And I'm not talking about bragging or, you know, being egotistical about it, but sharing with yourself, wow, you made a huge leap here. Be proud of that. I've always done this, and I find that when I do it, it just makes my day start off with a bang, and I love it. I exercise. Do you? And I'm not talking about, you know, going insanely crazy. Sometimes I do, especially after the holidays when I gain some weight. I do get crazy then. No, but I when I say I get crazy, I go there, and I'm probably at the gym four times a week instead of three times. You know, that's getting crazy for me. <clears throat> at the same time, I'm at the point in my exercise activity where I'm not staying at the gym just to be there. I'm getting in there and I'm getting out. If I've got, in, if I've got something to, to do, I schedule my day around getting myself up. You know, my, the first part of my exercise day is tennis. I think I've told you I play tennis. Seven o'clock I play tennis and then I go to the gym. I, make, I do a quick, quick, quick little workout, shower, get in the sauna and I'm out of there. I gotta tell you, my day is like amazing when I include that in my day. Sometimes I can include it and sometimes, you know, that three times a week turns to two times, you know, but I, I don't allow it to, to not be there all the time. I just don't allow that. When you're confident, you don't have to have attention all the time. You don't have to have attention. And on that note, I'm going to be right back to continue our conversation with successful women, distinct and masked identities. I'll be right back. Welcome to Spicy Business Talk and welcome to our spicy conversation about successful women and a really deep, deep dive into our distinction, how we're different and how we are, how we have identities, how we mask our identities, how we present ourselves. And this is, this is really fun for me because it really is a revelation of who I am and who a lot of other women are and maybe haven't really had a chance to think about it, how deeply, very, very deeply. So <clears throat> talking about exercise when I, when I was exercising, when I do exercise, like today, I, I didn't get a chance to, to do all the things that I want to in my, in my regimen, in my, my routine. So what happens then? So I start, you know, my day with 
maybe a meditation. Well, not maybe. Today I did start with a meditation. And that increases my spirituality. It didn't get me the physical exercise that I need, but it got my mind going. It got my confidence. It got my, you know, my pattern. It got my strategic planning for the day. What am I doing and how am I going to be, how am I going to give you what you need from this episode? And <clears throat> of course, I always do evidence-based research to I have so many things that I want to share with you. I have notes all over <laughs> all over the studio here because I don't want to miss some good stuff. And think, thinking about you know the confidence and the, the distinction when when I'm confident, I don't necessarily need anyone to give me attention. Do you know what I mean by give me attention? There's sometimes when you know you everybody loves to be complimented yeah yeah that's that's perfect but a lot of times i'm interviewing or talking or making a presentation and and i'm really focusing on the person or the audience that you know that i'm talking with and um several times in the studio i mean i just have some of the most wonderful guests men women executives you know the acronym for the people that come here and that are in the seat are speakers executives entrepreneurs authors and thought leaders and i have talked to some of the most amazing exhilarating stimulating brilliant minds and they oftentimes try to say, oh, Diana, you're a bit of it, and they flip the script, and they start talking about how brilliant I am. I don't want that. I want them. It's about your message. So when you're confident about what you do, you love what you do, and it's not like work. So I want my people to have the attention. That's why they come on my show, or that's why I serve them or coach them or do the things that I do to make their lives and their businesses better. So you don't have to be afraid to be wrong when you're confident, and you don't have to be afraid to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. I did not mean to do that. What was I thinking? Really? <laughs> I have a professor that says something that I, um, I won't say that because he cracks me up every time I say it. He says, are you on? <laughs> and I'm going, where do you get that from? Because he's always so, and speaking of professors, what, I'm always learning. I'm always looking for something new and different and something to say, uh, I want to try that. So when you're doing that, you might get you might be wrong sometimes you might do it wrong you might not grasp it in the way that you would like to had you had two or three years experience doing it and when you're confident i don't mind going out on the limb i don't mind going out on the limb for my beliefs what i know for what i know that means you know if i have to stick my neck out you know i'll be happy to suffer the consequences or to celebrate the successes. Yeah, I really don't mind sticking my neck out. And one of the things I love to do, and I found that, you know, people around me and my circles, people that I love to call my immediate successors, my immediate friends, they celebrate people. And I love to celebrate other people, no matter if it's a small celebration, if it's something as little as, oh my God, congratulations on your achievements, congratulations on your anniversary, whatever it is. It's always nice for someone to say that to you because it feels good. You feel like, you know, someone remembers you and I, and I like that, I really like that. And the most important thing about me, and when I say me, it's not about me. I, I use myself as an example because I'm a woman. The most important thing about successful women, it's really okay to ask for help. When you ask for help, you're in such a space of openness, of giving. And I also think that that's a characteristic of love because you love yourself and you love what you're doing enough to say, I think I'd like some help with this. Or I think I would like to ask someone else about what they think. What do you think? I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the mask identity. Stay tuned, this is Diana Price and you're listening to Spicy Business Talk.
Hi, this is Diana Price. Feeling really good today. Welcome to Spicy Business Talk. Feeling super good today. You know, do you think that successful women, let's put men in that category too, but, but do you think that successful women close their hearts, they close their minds in certain situations? I was thinking about that too. And I may talk about that in the next segment. I know I'm like, oh. but I, I have a couple things to say about how about that. So, but but now I want to I want to share with you some things that that I went through and some things that I am really close to when it comes to wearing a mask and the power that the masked identity gives you if you're confident enough to understand that it's a part of you. And it's not insecure at all. It's just a part of your presentation. It's a presentation that I have embraced. I have embraced the fact that during the corporate years that I loved all the things that I did and all the opportunities that I have and all the the ways that I was able to help people and to up-level myself in, in many different ways, loved that opportunity, loved the environment that I was in. It was fast-paced, it was in your face, it was what have you done for me lately, it's where are the numbers, it's where are the numbers, it's where are the numbers, and no matter how well you did it was where are my numbers so I'm, I'm sure you can identify with that so in many situations when I was making a presentation and I did a lot of presenting I did a lot of presenting whether it was to my team whether it was training them you know and how to how to interact with our with our customers it was it was a matter it was a journey it was an ongoing journey. It was always an up level, a learning, a, 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 you know, something went wrong. How do you fix it? It was a problem. What's the solution? So I had to change my presentations a lot. I had to change. The way I look never change. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You know, I'm still a, you know, African American black woman. That, that never changed. However, in social settings, if I was with people from my office, I had a different presentation than the presentation that I had when I went home in my personal settings with my family. You know, I found myself a lot doing and thinking that, what am I doing? Why do I have to do this? But at the same time, I thought, you're doing you. You are you. That's a different part of you, but it is still you. When I came to grips with that, I mean, I felt like a whole release. I, I felt, you know, I, and I really had to struggle with that because, you know, the way I talk now, the way I talk to my family, you know, it's the same, but it's different. Do you get that? But, but, it, but it's all a part of who you are. So when I say masks, when I say masked identities, that is the confident part of me coming out and presenting in a professional environment or connecting in a social environment or having a real fun just letting loose with my family and my friends and what a joy it was to to really come to grips with that because I, I don't know that I've ever I mean I can only talk to my friends about that it's difficult to talk to people that are not in the same boat so when you look at yourself as almost a threesome <laughs> what I mean a threesome I mean you have you have an identity for your social environment you have an identity for your professional encounters and you have another identity with your family I don't know if you have that in your life but let me share a couple things that I <clears throat> when I was doing research I was looking 
for other people that have had these experience and I'm wondering, like, how do you navigate through work? How did I navigate through work when I was going through this? And I didn't start going through it until I got in a leadership position. I want you to know that because when I was an employee, a frontline employee, it, it wasn't like I was encountering this because I was just myself. I always spoke very clearly. I, that, that was always me. But when I start up leveling my positions, I start really utilizing different aspects of myself that I never knew it was there. I, I didn't train myself for it. It just, it, just, it just happened. I didn't say, okay, now you're going to have to rehearse how you're going to act when you get in front of these people. Didn't do it. Just happened. Now, I'm always prepared. I prepare. I practice. I know my stuff. I want to do the right thing in the right way. And I'm always, I'm always taking notes. I'm telling you, I take notes. I keep notes. So... If something goes wrong, I'm, I, I know what to do. So the aspects that I'm talking about when it comes to masking yourself, I kind of like it now. I, because all, all of a sudden, the threesome is meshed all into my authenticity. And I don't make it, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't make it show-offy. I don't make it, you know, oh, look at this. I just, it's, it's all me. So if you ever have to think about how you are presenting your identity, if you know what I mean, how you are presenting yourself, think about what I'm saying. You probably have a threesome. And the threesome, the threesome in your identity is your social environment, your professional environment, and your personal environment. If you want to know more about mask identities and how you present your identities to adapt to a certain environment please get in touch with me I'd love to talk to you one-on-one -on -one about this or if you need to me to talk to your group about it give me a call at 866-631-7500 or you can email me at diana at dianaprisassociates.com Price, President and CEO of Diana Price and Associates and producer and host of Spicy Business Talk. And I want to talk to you about confident women. I did some research on myself and a lot of other wonderful women that I know and I want to share with you why confident women are very different and we have distinct identities. Let me tell you about when I was in corporate America. It was it was when I had to have multiple identities depending on the situation because I had to adapt to the environment. So the traits that others don't have, that's what confident women have. So when you see a successful woman, you see a woman that has these traits. She believes in her mission. She leads with confidence. She pays attention to what's going right and also what's going wrong. And she listens deeply. She asks a lot of questions. And you know what? She's truly humble. She's really humble. In fact, some of the times, depending on when we have to mask our identities, it is a mask, but it's really us. It's just a different part of our being coming out. We're going to talk a lot more about confident women and how we have to mask our identities sometimes in order to present ourselves in a certain light. Join us on Spicy Business Talk every Tuesday at 12 noon Pacific Time on rmconair.com. Hi, welcome back. This is Diana Price and welcome to Spicy Business Talk. Confident women, yeah, distinct, different, passionate, really, really clear about your mission, my mission. We're clear about that. And guess what? All my happiness comes from right within, right down in my gut. <laughs> yeah, and that's where those gut instincts come from that, that I actually follow a lot too. So here's some more about why we're different and how we're different. Confident women, I want to I give you some real evidence-based research again. 
that's going to help you. That's going to help you if you are way up there at your at the senior position, at the CEO position, or if you're really trying to figure out what your morals, what your values, what really makes you tick. Here are the things that you want to know about being successful and being confident, about being distinct and presenting yourself in the best way. You have to be deeply passionate about what you do. When I say deeply passionate, you have to really live and breathe your subject. The skill you have, you have to know it better than anybody else. Because if you don't, who's going to believe you? Why would I want to even deal with you if you're not passionate about what you do? You have to be passionate about what you do. Number two, don't ever, ever, ever expect to be perfect. And it's okay to use that word called F-A-I-L, F-A-I-L, fail, because you know what it is. It's, it's really an opportunity to learn. Failing is like, it's what we all do to succeed. So, don't expect perfection. It's okay. It really is okay. And if you ha are hanging around people that, that want to be perfect or seem to be perfect, don't let it happen to you. That's not the way you want to go. So, now, when you are in a successful woman successful man relationship <laughs> what am i going to say about this well wh wh what i'm going to say is if if you are very competent influential most of the time successful women will marry very very well or they won't marry at all think about that they will marry very well or they won't marry at all that's not always the case that's not always the case, but when I have looked, when I look, you know, around at friends and very high-powered women, and they either marry very, very well, or they don't marry at all. Isn't that something? I mean, it's it's kind of scary sometimes. And, it, it, and of course, if you if if you're really confident, man, you always become the boss. Well. I shouldn't say always. You often want to become your own boss. You want to be in your own business. You want to, you know, if you if you are, you know, on a frontline situation, you want to become the boss. You don't want to be, you know, the the troops. You want to be the leader. So that's all a part of 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 the success that I'm talking about. And <clears throat> the thing about me, and the thing about, you know, most successful women, you know, you're going to be successful. You have. Absolutely no fear about it. There's no if ends or buts about it. You know you're going to be successful. You have that mindset that I know it, and it's not a braggadocious kind of thing. It's just you're confident. You know it. Your mindset is I'm going to do whatever it takes to make this work for me. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep doing. It. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep doing it, and it's going to work well for me. So you believe that you will be successful. That is so, so, so important. So I expect a good bottom line. I expect my confidence to just exceed all other expectations. When I started this, I wasn't quite sure <laughs> about this next one, but I'm real sure about it now. It's okay to take risks. I have taken more risks I'd say in the last two years, and I've taken it in my entire life. It's really okay to take risks. And when you take risks, that really, really shows you where your mindset is. It shows you that you're willing to go out there, get out of that comfort zone, and really try something that you've never tried before. And be okay with the outcome. Learn from the outcome. You know, don't, you know, tell yourself, why did you do that? Why did you take that risk? So the reason I got better with taking risks, I could tell you, I, I would always, you know, be real comfortable and, you know, I went through this, I have this comfort zone presentation about leaders and comfort zone. It is, I did it to 
um, I presented it to CEOs and executives of the insurance industry because I'm also was a part of the insurance industry in corporate America, both insurance and travel. And this presentation is something that I lived through. And it was such, I got rave reviews from that presentation and that was just a complete blessing that I got all those rave reviews. But the, the bottom line, what I'm telling you is that when you're afraid to take risks, that was a risk I took to get in front of peers that are not only my peers, but are all also much higher than my peers and really interact and come on a level of connecting with them about comfort zone. It was one of the best things I've ever done in my life. And guess what? Had I not taken that risk, I, had, I would never have had that amazing success to celebrate. And the other question I would ask myself about taking risks is, what if I weren't afraid at all? What if I just weren't afraid to go out there and do it? What if I weren't afraid? What if there was no fear in me? What if there was, I was absolutely not afraid of anything, anything when it comes to my life, my business, my family, my being? What if I just wasn't afraid? What would that be like? Have you ever asked yourself that? Because when we're afraid of things, we kind of push back. We, there's a wall that comes up, but boy, I, I've become so willing to go out there and risk it. I had, a, I had one of the worst things happen to me, and I think I shared that with you on the show one time. I was telling you my story several years ago, but you know, I was up-leveling my business, doing some things that I really thought were good, investing here, investing there, and there was a point when I took all those risks, I think I told you, I lost so much money that I went to, I went into seclusion for a long time because I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle it. That made me so fearful, so afraid to do anything else in my life. That was probably one of the best things I went through in my life because now I'm not afraid. I have no fear. Think about what it would be like for you if you weren't afraid. Don't be afraid to take risks. So affect the change that you want in your life. Make sure that if you are, if you have not done something, if you're thinking about what you wanna do, you wanna open a business, you wanna start a new career, you wanna change your career, whatever in life you wanna do, don't miss out. Don't miss out, you only come around one time, so don't miss out. And when I say don't miss out, I don't want you to go out there and start making a lot of reckless decisions because I, I've never been one to make reckless decisions. As a matter of fact, I've been one that you know would be more conservative on all my decisions. So when I, when I failed or when I lost, it was like, what happened? I mean, I was very careful. So it doesn't matter how careful you are or, you know, Sometimes it doesn't matter how reckless you are, but I don't suggest <laughs> that you start being reckless about anything because it's not going to be the best result for you if you're completely reckless all the time. I'm not sure how many I've told you because <laughs> I got off I got off track because I love to to share uh, my own experiences with you. So when you successful women like me, I know that my to do list will never ever end. It's <laughs> it's always going to be. Oh, I did that. I completed that. I'm so happy about that, but oh my God, it's going on. It's, and, and that's okay. It's okay for my to-do list never to be completed. It will never be completed. Be okay with that because I have to learn to let go of some of the goals that you know I've, I, I've set for myself because some of the other goals were a priority over the goals that I didn't achieve. So like now, I'm just about to release my book. And it's taking me longer than I wanted to release my book. But I'm okay with that because I'll, I know it's gonna get done. It's gonna get done. So I have no anxiety, <laughs> believe it or not. No, just, <laughs> I just make it happen. And I keep 
a real good positive mindset about it because I don't want the negative chatter to ever enter. I just choose to kick it to the curb. It doesn't have any space. Here's a big one about what successful women do. And we have to learn to, we had to learn to do this. A lot of us still have to learn to do this. Successful women, successful women must schedule time for themselves. We have to schedule time for ourselves to be successful. We have to have some downtime. And we don't always get our downtime. But we need our downtime. We need time with friends. We need time with family. We need to associate. We need to go out and have a good time, kick up our heels. Yeah, we have to work hard and we do work hard, but we have to schedule time for me. We got to schedule me time. We got to schedule time to get in the sauna and the jacuzzi and, you know, to have tea and, you know, take a trip. Do it. Schedule time for you. And with that, I'm going to come back because I still have a few more to share with you. So stay with me. This is Diana Price, and we're talking about successful women distinct. And we'll be right back. Hi, this is Diana Price. We we're talking about how successful women are distinct and how, you know, there's there's always things that will get in our way, but we know how to just railroad right through it, right? So I've been giving you probably a lot more than 12 <laughs> things that successful women do very differently. We have these traits that are just amazing that we just don't let things bother us. So there's a couple more that I want to make sure that you are well aware of. I think this is number 12. I lost track because I, I started just listing them off. And when I do that, I'm really into it and having a lot of fun. So we know how to genuinely foster relationships, relationships that are good for us. And sometimes we get into a relationship that is good for us, but maybe it's not, no, we thought it was good for us. Let me be clear that we thought it was good for us, but turns out that maybe it wasn't that good for us after all. So we know how to get out of those relationships. <laughs> if you want to know how to do that, that's a whole nother episode. And I'll be happy to, to share and talk with you about that too, because I've been there, done that, but always, always come from a place of gratitude and forgiveness and you know that's very important so you know how to foster relationships so it's really the key to forming new friendships all the time and and, and just evaluating the friends that are in your life evaluating the the five closest people in your life as you hear me say on the show all the time because the strength of that relationship of, of those five closest people it, it really is the average of who you are so always be looking and forming new and better relationships with you with with friends and in the process enjoy yourself just enjoy every moment of the people that you are able to relate to i had a great time uh, just the other day my friend called me at the last minute at the very last minute and sometimes at the last minute i'm busy and i'm working and i'm like no i can't do it and i, I listened to myself and i was like it wasn't time that I had scheduled, but it was time that I wanted to take away and go and be with her because I heard in her voice she needed to be, she needed to connect. She needed to get away. And I said, of course, let me come get you. And we went out and we had the best time. I cannot tell you. I mean, I brushed up on my Hebrew. She's one of my Jewish friends. Bust up on my Hebrew and we, we went to a really amazing talk. And the talk was all about Aquarius. <laughs> That's what I am. And I'm like, oh my God. So that was a blessing for me to get away from my little 
wherever I was doing my work, you know, and really learn more about my sign, my water sign. My birthday's coming up this month. Yay! So it's it was it was fun. So really take that develop relationships and really spend time with yourself. And the and the last one of the 12 that I'm going to share with you today is express gratitude and and always find and be more grateful about things than you're not grateful for. Just never run out of things to be grateful for. That that way you're covered. Just never run out of things to be grateful for. The people around you are blessings. Everybody around you contributes to your life in some way. You know, a little bit more about the Aquarius that um, that that I went to see. It was it was one of those things where I I couldn't. You know, I don't really believe. I didn't really believe in astrology, but when you find out about how your spiritual being and how, you know, astrology and all that stuff works, it's just kind of interesting. And for me, you know, as a successful person, I like learning and I always will learn something new that I think will help me. And if it doesn't help me, wow, what am I going to do with that knowledge? I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'm going to enjoy it, enjoy it, enjoy it. So with that, I'm just going to I'm going to wrap up the session on the 12 things that successful women do, the traits that we have that other people just, maybe they need to get. And, and believe me, these 12 things, I have like 35, 40, 50, I've got a lot more, but I only had time for, I guess I think I gave you 15 today. I think it was about 14 or 15. So I'm going to come right back and I'm going to share some a few more words of wisdom with you. I I promised I'd try to get in a little bit about our successful women. Do we have a closed heart? So stay tuned. Next episode. Hi, this is Diana Fries. Welcome to Spicy Business Talk. We've been having a great conversation today. I wanted, I've been sharing a lot about women, successful women, and how distinct we are. And we are. We're all. We are. We all have our own definition of success. We all have our own definition of failure, of how we present ourselves, and it's 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 eye opening to really to think about all those things. One other thing that we do. All of us, I I shouldn't say all of us do, but I've done, you know, as when you, when you uplevel your success, when you become more successful, what happens? You know, sometimes I, I have a closed environment. Sometimes I'm, I have to be very careful who's around me and, and who's influencing me and who, you know, is telling me or suggesting or informing me or really. So sometimes my heart closes my my being closes up and that can happen also when you've had a in, you, when you've been in a relationship that hasn't been a, a very you know successful relationship whether it's with you know a husband a boyfriend whatever so one of the things i know a couple several things i noticed but one of the things i notice is when you date someone or have been married to someone and you think that the dynamics are there, you think you have those dynamics that that really make it work. When you get out of that relationship and then you get into another relationship and all of a sudden those same dynamics are recurring. They're recurring again. It's like, what did I do? How did I pick the same <laughs> situation? Did I uh, just do that? <laughs> so you know, sometimes we have to really be careful about what we are projecting because we're projecting that those dynamics 
that that's coming to us. Absolutely. So when you repeat the same patterns, let me just give you a couple things that I've gone through. When you repeat the same patterns in a relationship, it means that the cycle, the pain, <laughs> all the things that you went through are going to be repeated too. So be careful about repeating the same patterns. You got to check your mindset in order to really free yourself from that. So and you have to express yourself. For me, I have to sit down. Let me tell you what I did. I sat down and I wrote down a whole <laughs> laundry list of things that I want and I don't want in a man. Okay? I did that. So my heart could be open to that. My, my whole being could be open to that because my partner affects my business affects my mindset, affects the support that I have, the support that I want. So it's really huge to me to have a partner that is a supportive partner. So I want to be clearly understood <laughs> when it comes to that, that I am not here. I'm here to support and to serve. And whoever is in my life, I want to serve and support and love them that same way. And that's just what I expect. And I'm going to let you know what I expect. Yeah, I'm going to let you know that. Because if we don't let our partners know, whether it's in a business situation or a personal situation, then you get exactly what you ask for. If you don't ask for anything, you get what they decide to give you. If you do ask for something, then you get what you want. You get what you want. Sometimes it's important to say what you want and really be clear about it. Say exactly what you want. When you don't find a person that talks your language, that meets your values, that really believes how you believe, keep stepping because a man is not a plan. I think you've heard me say that a lot on the show. A man is not a plan. A couple more things that I want to share with you about opening up. It took me a while to understand what I deserved. I had to love myself first. It goes back to how women are distinct and how we're different. Just like the first trait in the professional woman in and you as a successful distinct woman, you have to be happy with yourself. You have to find happiness from within. You cannot have anybody else in your life defining your happiness. You have to define your happiness for yourself. Do you get that? Good. Because if you don't, you're always going to be out there looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> is that a song? Looking for love in all the wrong places. Yeah, I think it is a song. And you have to be able to trust yourself. If you make a mistake, okay. Don't get all bent out of shape about it, but then you have to trust someone else. Once you trust yourself, give yourself the opportunity to trust someone else. If it doesn't work out, you know what to do. You're a brilliant woman. You know what to do if it doesn't work out. But give yourself the ability to trust someone else. Now, we're running out of time, so just want to share the last few things that, that I've gone through about opening up. When you start a relationship, don't put your hopes up. Just kind of let it, let it go. Let it dissolve. Let it flow. You know, let it be. Don't try to make things happen. Don't try to hope this happens. Don't try to, th you can hope this happens, but, but don't, don't be so hopeful that you're just, you're pinning every little thing that you have on it. No, we don't want you to do that. So you might have to be okay being with yourself sometimes. Being lonely is not, being lonely to me is not, also equal to being insecure. So when you're lonely, that's natural, but you don't need to be insecure because you're lonely. You have to be good with being with yourself and being alone. You know, 
I was there for so long, but then I'm, I have just, I've trained myself for 20 years, these things that I'm talking about. I've trained myself how to choose the right mentality, choose the right mindset, and really just kick negative to the curb. So I want to share how much I appreciate the opportunity to open up. I haven't done hardly anything compared to what I was going to do. But, you know, I wanted to keep this on a safe ground. And as we pursue this conversation, I'll open it up. I'll dig a little deep. I'll sizzle down. <laughs> I'll make it a lot more flavorful. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed how successful women are distinct, how we're kind of a threesome. Do you know what I mean? We're distinct. We have closed hearts sometimes, not all of us. And not all the time. And number three, we wear a mask. This is Diana Price, and it's been a pleasure bringing you Spicy Business Talk. Have a fantastic week.